Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my hometown of Greendale, Wisconsin. A 3,410-acre Greenbelt community created by the Franklin Roosevelt administration. Now, some of you folks might be asking, what is a Greenbelt community? Excuse me. Using this uh, handmade drawing that I've um, created, it was an idea created by the Undersecretary of Agriculture, Rex Tugwell, in the mid-30s. So, Undersecretary Tugwell had proposed the idea of planning communities within a reasonable driving distance from a bigger city. As you can see here, the center of Greendale, the center of Milwaukee, is eight miles. And th this planned community was to move the poor people away from Milwaukee, away from the dirt, some of the crime and in cases, some of the high rents, move them to newer houses, well-built houses, hopefully at inexpensive rents. And as you can see, this gap around here between Milwaukee and also this gap to, on the north and the west side, these were actually fields, farms, and parkland. The idea back then, as some people think right now, think currently, that if you live in the country, you're gonna breathe cleaner air, you're gonna have a cleaner environment, and you're gonna be healthier. And in the case of the 1930s, the United States was in an economic depression, so if you had healthier workers, you're going to have more productive workers, and thus the economy will eventually get its way out of the doldrums. There were actually three, big, for an aside, there were actually three Greenbelt communities uh, created during the um, Roosevelt administration. There's one near Cincinnati inside Interstate 275, Green Hills, Ohio, and one near Greenbelt, and one just northeast of Washington, D.C., near the University of Maryland College Park, Greenbelt, Maryland. Now, as with any government right idea, if you have more than one agency that it takes charge of a project, nothing ever seems to work right. You've got the Resettlement Administration that was in charge of the lofty goals. The idea was to put 750 houses in Greendale, houses and apartments, move the low-income folks from Milwaukee to Greendale as quickly as possible. The physical work was actually done by the Works Progress Administration. And while they had no problem creating the Greenbelt communities, they had an agenda of their own. All they wanted to do in assisting the creation of Greendale was to keep the men on the employment, on the employment payroll for as long as possible. So what you saw in Greendale, and some of the dignitaries may have even seen this as well, you saw men, you saw plenty of shovels, you saw plenty of wagons, some of them more strong, and for the equipment that was used to create the roads, road graders, they were also horse strong. So you, as expected, when you've got one agency thinking that the other agency is doing a little, is not doing its job, you've got conflict. And eventually the conflict resolved itself in 1938 with Greendale being built, but instead of 750 homes, you had 572 homes. And it turned out that the rents in Greendale were no better than the rents in Milwaukee either. The average rent was $26 a month, and the only bargain between the $26 houses in Greendale and the $26, houses in, uh, $26 a month houses in Milwaukee was that you had better bill homes in Greendale. As I might have, as I've hinted earlier, there were plenty of dignitaries that had come across. Uh, so, uh, Russian dignitaries had come by, um, various um, folks of the administration come by, even Eleanor Roosevelt came by. And she even toured the homes one day, and this is a uh, blow up of a housing plan that I've uh, drawn for you. This just shows you that you, en that you enter the kitchen and go into the utility room and Next to the utility room was the coal bins. Originally, the uh, Greendale houses were coal fire, were heated by coal fire furnaces. Now, Eleanor Roosevelt comes in, takes a look at this setup, particularly the setup between the utility room and the coal fire furnaces, and notices one thing a little bit odd. As you might be able to notice, there was no door between the coal bin and the utility room. And the utility room, of course, is where 
you had your laundry and your other stuff and other things that you needed to clean the house and so on. Eleanor Roosevelt took a look at this situation and legend had her saying, huh, I see a man designed these houses. Now, the man, now, if you needed to design a house or anything for a family, you need a woman at your elbow. Eleanor Roosevelt also was also did say that being a mother herself, there was no, it was impossible to clean the house if you've got coal dust flying all over the place. As the old gadage goes, if mama ain't happy, nobody's happy. So first mama finally got her wish, and the architects and the builders installed the door right around a few days after Eleanor Roosevelt complained about the situation. Now whether the city, of, now whether the village of Greendale, and it's still incorporated as a village today, would still have been a good depression area project, we'll never know. Greendale was officially opened in 19, was officially open, was officially incorporated in 1938 as a village. And 1939, World War II took place in Europe, and well, of course, the economy started to overheat, so we really don't know in a way whether Greendale's a success or not. To make a long story short, 1945, World War II ends in 1945, the Truman administration comes to power, he decides, no, the private sector can do a lot better job in providing housing for low-income residents than the federal government. So the federal government, after um, negotiating and wrangling, and along the way the Korea War also intervened as well, 1950, so in 1951, the houses, well, they were uh, they were bought originally first by the green residents that were in them, then they were sold to veterans groups, and then they were eventually um, sold to anybody who wanted to move into Greendale. So what's happened to Greendale today? Well, thanks to a modern economic development, the belt of The belt of green has now become a belt of steel and concrete thanks to um, new, thanks to the creation of various suburbs. A couple of businesses have also, oh by the way, for the record, I happen to live on Greendale's East End. And a couple of businesses have also have headquartered themselves in the Greendale as well. The United States Bowling Congress, which is located, the United States Bowling Congress, which is located roughly here, which was a result of the American Bowling, was a result of merger of four bowling agencies in 2005. And the other one is Ryman Publishing, who you may not know by its name, but if you happen to read magazines like Taste of Home and Country Woman. Uh, that publishing company has thrived here after being sold out after in the last six years it changed hands twice and is now part of Reader's Digest and eventually on its company letterhead will be known as Reader's Digest America. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for letting me share a short analysis of the history of my hometown for you, for all its good qualities and its bad qualities. And even though I live in Marysville and enjoy your company in Marion, I'm proud to call Greendale home and I'm proud to share my news with you.